Welcome everybody. Special welcome to our seniors who are locked in their rooms. We just can't get out to visit. Well, my name is George Shar, and I'm the music teacher at Falmouth Academy. And we thought what better way to brighten your day than to bring some of our talented music students live to you. So today we have a very special presentation. This is the inaugural first primetime appearance of a new show that we'd like to run every week for you, Sunday at one o'clock. It will air on FCTV and simultaneously on YouTube and Facebook, Musical Postcards for Seniors. I'd like to especially welcome uh, the folks at Atria, JML, Laurentide, Pavilion, and all of the Upper Cape Senior Homes and Nursing Homes. We know you're really gonna enjoy this show. In the next 30 minutes, you'll get a chance to hear and to know a music student at Falmouth Academy. Each show will feature a different student and you will really love this student we have for you to meet today. This weekly series, as I said, will air one o'clock on Sunday every week and it will be available through FCTV as reruns as the week goes on. We're gonna talk with these students about their talent, why they chose their particular instrument, their goals, their aspirations, and something that I'm particularly interested in, how are you doing? This is a tough time. These guys are living through history. Those of us that are older, we know that. Some of us may even remember World War II. My parents went through the war, and although I didn't know the war, I certainly felt like I lived through it with them. These are history unprecedented times. So something much more cheerful now, let us start this program. And I'm going to talk first of all about the composer of the piece you're going to hear. This piece was written by Frederick Seitz. Now Frederick Seitz was a violinist who lived in Germany from the middle of the 19th century to the early part of the 20th century, specifically born in 1848. He died in 1918. And he played the violin and he was a master of the violin. In fact, he played chamber music and he was also a concert master in one of the local symphony orchestras there in Germany. What made him famous and why we use his name today is that he wrote eight violin concerti. And these violins were used in the Suzuki method of training violin uh, and students all over the world who have been trained on Suzuki would be familiar with this concerto. This is a lively, popular, easy listening piece. And it, what we're gonna to play today is the second movement, uh, the third movement of his second violin concerto. Ladies and gentlemen, please let's welcome Luca McDonald. Luca is a junior at Falmouth Academy and she is going to be playing the Seitz Violin Concerto number two in G major, the third movement. Thank you. 
nice job, Luca. Thank, Thank you. you so much for coming over here to talk with us and, and meet our, our new friends. Um, that was just magnificent. You know, one of the Thank things you. I didn't say in my introduction about Seitz was that he was a romantic composer. Mm -hmm. And romanticism was very, very expressive. And that piece was, I don't know, how does that music make you feel when you play it? Um, well, I really like playing music like that because it's like a really good way to like kind of like even let emotions out if you're really feeling something. And I think it's, yeah, it's a really good channel like that. So a music? lot of the times, yeah, to put feeling into music, you gotta make yourself feel that. Exactly, music does have a way of relieving stress, not only for us that are listening to it, but when we're playing, it occupies all the parts of our brain. So we really don't even have time to think about something else. It's really fascinating. But that opening melody has a lilt to it. It's a very, and for many of our viewers, it's probably the first time they've heard it, but I bet that we could all sing it back right now. Now, you're obviously a master of the violin, and I think you've been playing that piece for a long time. How long have you, how many years have you known that piece? Since I was nine. Um, I, started, I started book four of Suzuki. You know, Suzuki has books. Um, I started that book when I was in about fourth grade. So, so if you started that when you're nine in the fourth grade, are you 17 now? How old are you? I'm 16. I'm turning 17 in July. So you've been playing that seven years. And how old were you when you started to play the violin? I was four. So I've been playing violin for 12, almost 13 years. What, four years old. What's the first song you learned as a four-year-old? What's the first thing you could play on the violin? What? Um, they had us do was it wasn't actually a song, but I remember walking out of that lesson being like, oh my God, I know a song. I, I <laughs> am so good at violin. Basically what they'd have us do is play this rhythm on um, one, like one string or two strings. And it was, um, it was called BB Bumblebee. And it went like this. That's wonderful. It's not quite as melodic as the Sites Violin Concerto, but that's... <laughs> so you left your first class actually playing that. That's great. Now, yeah. um, when your first lesson, did you... I saw one of your teachers do this. Did you stand on pizza boxes? I did not stand on pizza boxes. We had, um, a, they, we had like a rug and it had feet on it. So to get the correct position of like your feet, you would stand in the foot, in the foot, um, holes. So let me understand this for our viewers. The way your feet are positioned on the floor has to do with the position of the violin up here. How is that connected? Uh, what you want is you want your feet like shoulder length apart and one a little bit in front of the other because that kind of helps like stabilize you and it kind of shifts your body to the correct position. Right. Um, especially when you're looking at a music stand. Um, it's easy to bend down when you're looking, but that's not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to be able to keep your violin up. So you, like your posture really helps with that. Fabulous. So Luca, in that piece you just played, I noticed that right on about in the first minute, there's a couple of times where you're playing more than one note at the same time. Yeah. Is, how do you do that on a violin and what is it called? Um, so it's called double stops. Actually, the most you can play is all four, but you have to break it up into two. I mean, you first learn it, like what I do when I'm practicing double stops, is first I just play the two strings open together. And then um, to really learn like the, the notes, you play one, and then together. And then, um, and then you play them together. And that's how beautiful it, it's it, you know you're accompanying yourself you're playing a beautiful harmony and of course sites wrote that into the concerto that way and i'm sure that a lot of our viewers noticed that and heard it but maybe some didn't realize that a violin was able to live and and i actually you can play what's called a counterpoint you can play under certain conditions a second melody that is independent from the first on the on another yeah. string you see it's, those in a lot of fugues like um exactly like, Fugue in G minor, there's a lot of that going on. You, um, of course, I have you in school, and you're just a joy to have in all of our classes. Uh, she play, you play in rock bands, and, and you play electric violin, and you play in our jazz band, and you play in our string ensemble, and our symphonic ensemble. But one of the most, um, one of the most memorable things that you do is at this young age, you, you're volunteering, and you bring your music to 
uh, the pavilion, I believe, right? Nursing and Rehabilitation Center, which is near you. Tell us about that. What's that like and how long have you been doing that? Oh, it's a lot of fun. Um, I've been doing it at the pavilion for this year, but I did it at, um, I did it at the JML right. um, sophomore year a lot. That was a lot of fun. I'm really sad I, I can't go back to JML, but it got too far from us. But I do it at the pavilion. I but I do it at the pavilion. I before before this virus hit, I would do it every Sun um not Sunday, Saturday. Nice. Um at I think it was three forty five to four forty five. And it was always a lot of fun. I'd play them all these jazz standards. I play guitar, I play ukulele, I play violin there. Um and it was always really nice to to bring joy to them I had I had people who would always who would always have requests for me whenever I came they nice. remembered my name it was it was really great that's wonderful and and we all get a lot of joy out of your music now of all the instruments you play you also play the drums and I know you love playing the drums so uh, I, I would like to tell the viewers a, a little story uh, in our uh, Falmouth Academy Jazz Band, every year we go up to New Hampshire and we take a tour of the White Mountains. My wife calls it the Northern New England Tour. And we've been doing that about 15 years. It is a blast. I hope it'll happen this year. We're all, we're all uh, down on shutdown, so I don't know. But one year, our drummer couldn't make it. So we had about 20 kids and no drums. So we looked around the room and I said, who can play the drums and what happened? I came and I was like, I can do it. And I I have a friend who's a drummer, so she had taught me some beats and yeah. like a simple rock beat. She taught me 25 or 6 to 4, so yeah. I could play it. As I recall, you played 25 or 6 to 4. It was great. And we ended up, by the time we came home from that trip, I think we had three or four kids in the band who also yeah. doubled on the drums. It was a lot of fun. Now, you also play um, with one of our other students, James Goldbach, who's uh, a, a very talented keyboard. And uh, folks at home, you're going to be meeting him in a subsequent uh, uh, show. And James Goldbach plays saxophone and keyboard and guitar, and he is also a talented musician. And you two folks play as a as the Falmouth Academy jazz duet, and yeah. you've done some groups. Now you did a you did a job about well I don't know some months ago at the train station right in Falmouth. Yeah. Tell, tell, what, what did you play? I remember you doing. Uh, uh, in the Hall of the Mountain King, right? Yes, we did. So, tell me about tell me about that arrangement. So James and I had done that in band, like you know, we played we played in the Hall of the Mountain King sophomore year, and we we both loved that piece. So we were like talking together about like what we should play, and then I started playing my part, and he started playing it on piano. And halfway through, we like looked at each other and we were like, "What if we made this jazzy?" And so we figured out how to get it from classical, and then we stopped in the middle, and we started playing it, a jazz version of In the Hall of the Mountain King, and it was so much fun. I, I like working with James a lot because we can riff off each other, and it's just like, it's music like it's a language, which is hard to do with a lot of people. It sure is a language. Now, I'm gonna put you on the spot here, and this isn't something we have talked about, but could you give our viewers just a little sample of how in the Hall of the Mountain King, just a couple of measures might sound as a jazz piece? All right, let's see. We, we have not practiced this, folks. <laughs> Nicely done. And folks at home, she probably hasn't played that in the better part of a year. And uh, that was a spontaneous moment. Thank you very much for indulging me. So well, now uh, you have another piece that you've prepared for our viewers. And I, I, I'd like to turn the microphone over to you and, and tell us a little bit about this piece you're going to play and what instrument you're going to play it on. All right. So I'm going to be doing Fly Me to the Moon, but not on violin. I'm going to be playing guitar and singing it. Um, it's, I love Fly Me to the Moon. I've loved Fly Me to the Moon since I heard it. Um, it's one of my favorite Frank Sinatra songs. And when I go and play for the old people, it's like the my opening song 
Like that's the yep. song I start with because it's so well known. Like you hear Fly Me to the Moon, you know it, you know? So that's why I chose this because I knew that I'm sure our viewers are would really, I really like that song. Yeah, this is one of my favorite songs as well. Ladies and gentlemen at home, here is Luca McDonald playing Fly Me to the Moon. Fly me to the moon, let me play among the stars. Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. was fantastic Thank you. <laughs> I have a tear in my eye <laughs> do you know that you're a song stylist really yes you've taken if you think of the way Frank Sinatra sang that it was mm -hmm. quite different and you've taken that song and you've put your own spin on it it was just wonderfully wonderfully done now I noticed something in the starting of that song and some of our audience members who are musicians may have noticed the same thing you actually started to sing before you played the first chord. And I think this is, that first chord is an A minor, I think, right? So it's, it's C minor. major, yeah? It's, yeah, it's, well, I played it in A flat. The original key is C. Oh yeah, in the original key, it's, it's an A minor, but that's I played correct. it in A flat. So in that key, it's an F. That's that's correct. Good for you. Music theory is 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 coming through. But your first note of that song is a C in the key of A minor. It's a C, and you yeah. hit that first note before you actually strummed it on the guitar. Mm -hmm. So you know, I know that you have a you you have a, a gift, um, and you have perfect pitch. Yeah. So you're able to. Um, and just yesterday in rehearsal, I'll tell our viewers that uh, our technical person uh, Marcus Greco, who's behind the scenes filming this. Um, I wonder if he has perfect pitch because we were talking about this song and he started to sing that in the correct key, which is A minor. So is perfect pitch a blessing or is it a curse? And, and let me just explain to our audience, that means like uh, when we see a color, we know if it's green or blue, you can hear a note and know if it's a C or an A flat. Mm -hmm. I can hear a note and I can instantly tell you what it is. I don't have to think about it. Right. It it's it's just there. It is. It is a God-given gift, and that's a. So, do you find that a blessing or a curse? It really depends. Um, a lot of it is, like, it, it's <clears throat> really helped me through music, and it's helped me get to the point that I am because I, I can just pick up a. You ask me to play anything, and I'll be able to just play it. Like any melody, I can just play it. Yeah. Because I mean, the notes translate. They don't have a problem. But yep. it's also a bit of a curse because. I 
can't stand it when people are out of tune. <laughs> a lot of the times it's hard to concentrate if I, if people are out of tune and also, yeah, it's, it's, I it's completely really understand. <laughs> I completely understand. And many of our audience viewers may know that I'm a trombonist and we're famous for playing out of tune because we just have that slide and where is the note? Fabulous. Well, now I want to talk in this segment a little bit about your personal life and your hobbies and what you do. So, you know, okay. for, for you have a beautiful home there and I, and you, I met your pets when I was over. Um, you, I love dogs yeah. and you have, you have a pup. He's a chocolate lab, a pup. He's not really yeah. a pup. Let me go yeah. find Moby. What? Moby, let's Moby is his name. And yes, to our viewers Moby. back home, I would love you to meet Moby. This dog is just a big slurpy puppy. Oh, I think we good. have some treats. Oh, here he is, Moby. Hi, Moby. Oh, you're so cute. Let's see if we can get a good shot of his face. Yeah. Moby. I wish I had a dog cookie for you. Oh, oh, oh isn't he cute? Can you sit still? For me, please. Oh, oh, that's good. This is going better than it went in dress rehearsal. That is great. <laughs> All right, yeah, that's my dog. I have one of my cats here. I'll go get him. So you have two cats. Yes, I do. Yeah, and so let me see. Here is Luigi. Here. So Hero and Luigi. Yeah. Two, and these two cats I met yesterday for the first time. They're cute. Now this looks like Luigi, right? Yeah, this is Luigi. Oh, Luigi's what a cute, later. what a cute bundle of fur. Luigi, look at the camera. Look at the camera. You know, I should take this opportunity, and I think it might be obvious to our audience at home, but we're all in, in, in stay-at-home place, too. And I'm uh, filming this from my music room, and Luca is obviously at home a couple of towns away in her home. Yeah. And our technician is on another site at his home. <clears throat> There's no person-to-person -person contact here at all um and that's been quite something that my hats off to you luca and Thank to marcus greco who is doing the technical stuff now what do you have you know you're a very talented musician what do you do when you're not playing music what what lights you up what what are your hobbies um i really like to draw i like to play i play lacrosse every year which i really like and it's always a lot of fun um i read i i want to get a little bit more back into it but I still really like to read. Um, yeah, I I mean, I like hanging out with friends and yep. yeah. Now in this in this time of, of shutdown and lock up and yes, go. I also really like writing. I forgot. <laughs> I write. I like to write. I write so, poems, I write well, short stories. So yes, you are in Miss Turner's creative writing class, aren't you? I was last year, yeah. You did that last year. I know, I heard great things from Miss Turner about your writing. So, you know, there's a lot of school of thought that language and music, because music is a language, those are connected in the brain. So mm -hmm. good for you. So in this, in this tough time, this unprecedented time that, that we're living through, how are you adapting? How is it going for you? Do you have good days? Do you, how do you socialize? How do you, you know, socialization is so important to all of us. Yeah. Um, well, it's, it's hard to not be able to see my friends. I mean, I have my parents mm -hmm. here, which is nice, but mm -hmm. it's really hard not to be able to be with my friends and see them. I FaceTime people a lot, yep. which is kind of how I, how I stay in contact and how a lot of people in our generation stay in contact with people. Um, so that's always really nice to like, see like FaceTime people play online games, stuff like that. But I mean, it's on the upside, it's given me a lot more free time. Like I'm thinking of picking up electric guitar and like mm -hmm. learning that I play classical guitar. So it's like, that's like a whole different thing for me. I'm thinking of like picking up embroidery, maybe embroidering shirts. And it's like I have all this free time that I never had before, right. which is the bright side of it, I guess. Now, Falmouth Academy, uh, you know, has, has gone to a distance learning mode. And for our viewers at home, um, we were hoping we weren't coming to this, but beginning about five or six weeks ago, uh, sometime in mid-March, actually yeah. it was very early March, if not late February, we saw this possibly coming on the horizon. So we've been preparing for what we are now in, distance learning. And so you take now, normally, you, how many classes a day do you take in your distance learning? And how does, tell us how that goes. What's your schedule like? I take either, I have a very... 
I take either two or three classes a day in distant learning, whereas it's normally six in a day in regular right. school. Um, study hall counts as a class one of my days, so yeah. I am normally finished on some days by 11.20. Yeah. And it's, I don't, I mean, it can't compare to real school, but I mean, I like, like I do, it has ups and upsides and downsides. Like upside, I mean, after I have pretty much my own, uh, my whole afternoon free when I get done with class, like class normally finishes in the morning. But I mean, the downside is it can be a little bit hard to teach over Zoom. Yes. A little confusing, like there's a big lag, like we, we know band isn't the same, but um and it's it's it um it would be nice to also have like social like physical contact with people but right so let me let me take that opportunity to tell our viewers you know we have 24 kids in our advanced instrumental ensemble and uh, we meet once a week for 45 minutes which is down it would normally be once a week for 70 minutes and we can't all play together just as luca and i cannot talk at the same time the the Technology doesn't handle a signal coming and going at the same time. So we've developed ways in the industry, uh, National Music Educators Association and so forth. We will be broadcasting uh, in mid-May um, a digital postcard and everybody will be playing individually in their homes. And then we will sync it up at the office, if you will, here at the music studio and then uh, play it back for you uh, all blended together. And there is some of that out. Berkeley College of Music just put one out on YouTube and the results are just stunning. We do miss that chemistry of instant reaction and, and playing with each other. And it's just such a bonding um, art form. Yeah. So, so it's just been wonderful. And how are your spirits doing all of this? Do you have good days and bad days? Are they pretty yeah. good? Are they, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, it's good days, bad days. Um, yep. It's weird to not have structure um in your life you know it's like I went from like a a lot of structure to little to none which has been a really weird transition but for the most part I mean my life hasn't changed significantly right so I mean it's been okay I'm just really hoping I'm waiting for hopefully when this is all done over the summer and I'll right. be able to go out and it'll be really warm and I'm excited for that. I know, I know. I'm spending my late afternoons chopping trees in the backyard. So uh, teaching classes and having meetings, I practically live on Zoom these days and it's, it's quite a different world. Yeah. So uh, Luca, we're, we're nearing the end of our program and I'm sad to see this come to an end, our inaugural program of musical postcards for seniors. But I understand you have one more song for us. What would you that like to close too. with? Yeah. Um, dream a little dream of me. Very nice. Ladies and gentlemen, Luca McDonald, dream a little dream of me. Stars shining bright above you. Night breezes seem to whisper I love you. Birds singing in the sycamore tree. Dream a little dream of me Say nighty night and kiss me Just hold me tight and tell me you'll miss me While I'm alone as blue as can be Dream a little dream, dream of me